all the satellites in space could crack open the ozone layer. Is that even possible? Well, a paper coming out May 20th of this year, satellite mega constellations create risks in low Earth orbit, the atmosphere, and on Earth. Well, it leads us pause to what all this space junk, all these low Earth orbit satellites, well, what's the risk? What is it? Now, the hole in the ozone layer, Earth's protective chemical shield that absorbs most of the sun's ultraviolet rays, has slowly healed over the last few decades since the global ban on chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs. But scientists are now raising alarm about puncturing a new hole in the ozone layer, this time without any noticeable CFCs in sight. Instead, the surprising cause is deterioration of the aluminum in mega constellation satellites like SpaceX's Starlink network. Now, for our purposes, a satellite is a human made object put in low Earth orbit or LEO for a planned lifespan. And there are about 5,000 active and defunct satellites in low Earth orbit with over 40,000 Starlink sats planned in our future. Plus, satellite projects from national space agencies and private companies around the world. Researchers from the University of British Columbia say their new scientific report that the human-made distinction may seem obvious, but it hasn't always been. And that's because scientists spent decades favorably comparing satellite junk to the amount of material deposited and burned up in our atmosphere by meteorites. Can you believe that? <sighs> well, as it turns out, it's a matter of quality rather than quantity. That's because meteorites are made of a different constellation of minerals and elements than our custom manufactured sky robots. Now we have 54 tons or 60 tons of meteoroid material coming in every day on Earth. With the first generation Starlink, we can expect about an additional 2.2 tons of dead satellites re-entering Earth's atmosphere daily. Did you hear that? 2.2 tons of dead satellites re-entering Earth's atmosphere daily. By meteoroids, are mostly rock, which is made of oxygen, magnesium, and silicon. These satellites are mostly aluminum, which the meteoroids contain only a very small amount, which is about 1%. Aluminum is the key to everything at stake here. First, it burns into a reflective aluminum oxide or alumina, which could turn into an unwitting geoengineering experiment that could alter Earth's climate. And second, Aluminum oxide could damage and even rip a new hole in the ozone layer. Shut up, Al. Let's look at each threat separately and try to figure it out, shall we? There's the meteorite. Now let's get to geoengineering. Geoengineering is the umbrella term for technologies that seek to alter the climate or other physical realities on the planet. The major meaning that most people associate with the word is solar geoengineering, an experimental idea to fight climate change. Yes, that includes launching reflective aerosols that will block the sun back into space and ostensibly cool the planet, which is what Bill Gates is trying to do. But we just don't know how large-scale geoengineering could affect the planet's climate. In the science fiction Snowflake, Snowpiercer, geoengineering has turned Earth into a lifeless ice ball whose only survivors must crowd aboard an unceasing train eating bug parts. And that's probably our worst case scenario. Now, aluminum oxide scatters more light than glass with a refractive index of about 1.76 compared to just 1.52 for glass 
and 1.37 for plain aluminum. The researchers write, anthropogenic deposition of aluminum in the atmosphere has long been proposed in the context of geoengineering as a way to alter Earth's albedo. These proposals have been scientifically controversial and controlled experiments encountered substantial opposition. In fact, every single one has been canceled in recent times. Unfortunately, mega constellations of satellites will begin this process as an uncontrolled geoengineering experiment. Can you believe that? What then of the ozone layer? Once again, the aluminum oxide comes, from, comes to the forefront here. As aluminum burns, as these satellites re-enter, it will chemically react with the ozone in the air to form aluminum oxide, thereby depleting the naturally protective supply of ozone in the atmosphere. Now, the atmosphere can absorb a small amount of these chemicals without ill effect, but with tens of thousands of satellites in play, in the future, the quantities will naturally go up exponentially. That's in addition to the ozone damage done by each rocket launch to put satellites in the low Earth orbit. Rockets threaten the ozone layer by depositing radicals directly into the stratosphere, with solid-fueled rockets causing the most damage because of the hydrogen chloride and alumina they contain in their fuels. While satellites typically dissolve as they re-enter above the stratosphere where most ozone is contained, the particulates can drift down into the stratosphere in order to react there with the ozone. Now scientists Gerald Drolhoshkin, an expert on meteoroid material, told Space.com that aluminum oxide will sink to that next level and subsequently cause extreme losses. So where does this all leave us? Well, light pollution, first of all. Less people will be able to see the Milky Way galaxy than ever before. And what they will see in its place is a cacophony of low Earth orbit satellites, potentially geoengineering the planet. Now, this study will help us better understand some of the eventual consequences of that idea. And it's filled with descriptions of existing space governing laws, or lack thereof, with commentary about what could change or what needs to change. First, the authors say it's an inadequate policy governing end of life rules for satellites, because there is none. Something stricter would take into account all the factors associated with, like with Elon Musk's Starlink mega constellation, a huge array of satellites that are made to frequently be replaced as thousands re enter. Second, an interagency space debris coordination committee recommends but cannot enforce that satellites include collision avoidance and deorbiting technologies that would add costs. Holy macaroni. Now, the lack of a unified body of rules is a huge problem because we're about to launch 50 times more satellites and space junk into, the, into space than ever before in just the coming decade. And with the waning magnetosphere, the potential grand solar minimum, these objects will re-enter and will become part of the problem. Now, national regulators such as the FCC are assigning orbital shells to mega constellations on a first come, first serve basis, but these will all sell out. And who decides what the upper limit is? Without assessing the effects on other countries, other continents, these could include making any additional or further satellites to those shells too dangerous to even contemplate. The researchers also say the high number of planned satellites is a threat to simple astronomy because the light pollution and effective sky clutter caused by these satellites. 
there's little recognition that Earth's orbit is a finite resource. The space and Earth environments are connected, and the actions of one actor can affect everyone from the top down. Until that changes, we risk multiple tragedies of the commons in space. And that's a disgrace. These oligarchs, the elitists, the people that can afford to shoot 40,000 satellites in low Earth orbit could potentially be, well, destroying the biome below. But we already knew that. Oligarchs have always raped the planet of its resources with ill regard to humanity. And that's a boon to knowledge. Hope you got something out of the video. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. As the schmuck tards destroy not only our earth, but now our space. What a disgrace. Be safe. We love each and every one of you. Subscribe to the channel. Share this with like-minded people. And we'll see you next time.